on the floor of day of Christmas boobies are a part of my memory. The one with the kid named McCauley. Well, right now we are going to be talking about is Home Alone. A Christmas movie, but directed by John uh, Christopher Columbus, written by John Hughes. You know John Hughes, famous for Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, well, well, I know we're going to mention that other Christmas movie, but that's going to be on the uh, that's going to be on mentioned on the seventh day. Of course. <laughs> Pardon me. All right, guys. Let's cut, cut right to the chase with Home Alone. Now, this is one of the best classic movies. It's, you know, you got the star, young star, Macaulay Culkin, who is FMS for the for that other Christmas movie, The Nutcracker. Well, this is like three years before he appeared on Nutcracker. But then, you got the R-rated superstar, Joe Pesci. It's one half of the Wet Bandits. And Dale Sturd, the other half of the Wet Bandits. But, you know, that's what I'm just saying, you know. Although, you know, and it's got the music of John Williams. Famous for Spielberg Lucas movies. Like Jaws, Jurassic Park, Star Wars, Indiana Jones. You know, name him. And of course, he's on the resume. But, just like that. And we are, of course, with, with Lucas, you know. Everyday Lucas film, and that's what I'm just saying. But other than that, but other than that, I'm just you know, let's talk about it. It's about an eight year old named Kevin McAllister who, uh, of course, of his antics caused by his troublemaking older brother Buzz. And they got him set up in the room, and he wishes he wants to be alone without family. So the family are planning to, uh, of course, go into France. Or is that? Oh, no, wait. I think that's the other one. Well, and then. But and then, the kind of rest down sort of left them. Let them leave him behind, home alone. He made his family get scared. And then, of course, shopping. And there's, of course, there were traps he set up to get the wet bandits out. And, of course, he's terrified of that old man next door. Because, you know, one with the story that Buzz made up. But then at the church scene, he's, he's not much of a bad guy. Well, to his... To his son, well, to his son, he is a bad guy, but, but, not the Kevin McAllister, and then, of course, now, we're going to get to my favorite trap, my favorite was the uh, Joe Pesci ones, got the gun to the testicle, the, the BB gun to the testicles, and then, get his hand burnt with a doorknob, Setting his hair on fire. Ironically, he is bald. He is balding for that. And of course, we can't see, of course, more of traps. Like, of course, getting sliding down the, uh, slide down the stairs of ice. Iron to the face. And of course, Getting to, uh, of course, you know what I'm trying to say. Try and get upstairs, but they go barefooted with tarp, and they got his nail stepped on. Got stepped on the uh, ornaments.
Yeah, but the favorite duo's trap, of course, was the paint cans. Were the paint cans, and then you know the car, toy cars. Well, if it was Legos, then that would be painful as hell. And then, of course, we get to Mark's famous screen with the uh, tarantula. But an interesting fact, the actor who played Marth was not allowed to scream because he would fear that a spider would kill him. He would die if he, you know, if he actually screamed. But, but the, uh, and of course the, uh, you know, spider and and of course, both of them got the shovels on their faces. You know? Well, Marv to the back of the head and Harry to the face. And then they got arrested. And they all had saved Kevin McAllister. But then, he learned his lesson. It was better to be with family, you know? Like, unless he gave to church. Yeah, I know I missed a few traps, but I got more to take care of. All right, and I'll be back for the, the fifth day of Christmas movies with the sequel to Home Alone, Home Alone 2. On the sixth day of Christmas, that movies came to me. The sequel with... Kevin McAllister again and the wet bed is again but this time in New York City alright now we are at sequel Home Alone 2 which is not my guilty pleasure just you know yeah it's just it because like I say of course it's it's of course you know Return of Macaulay Cogan, Joe Pesci, and uh, Daniel Sturt, and the rest of the cast of the family. But although, hey, Kevin McAllister's going, you know, everybody's, oh yeah, oh yeah, it was Paris. While the other family's going to Miami, Kevin McAllister was on the rock plane, and he's going to New York. But this time they got Rob Schneider. The old lady from Angels in the Outfield, which is a sports film, which is a sports movie. But, although, we are, of course, we are, of course, at going to, no, at Tim Curry, Rob Schneider. And that's what makes these interesting, right? Wrong. Although with the see with the toy store at the hotel with the favorite with the hilarious shower scene with Uncle Frank singing the cool jerk singing a cool jerk song. Get out of here, you nosy little pervert, or I'm gonna slap you silly. Yeah. Now today we get to different traps at the abandoned at the abandoned house. I mean, car flip it, yeah. That was too dangerous, but the worst of all was the bricks, but thankfully they were fake and not real. But if they were real bricks, then they would kill someone. Give it a head trauma to the face, you know? More four types. The first shot, he is dead. The second brick shot, he's dead. Third brick shot, he's dead. Fourth brick shot, Dad. Yeah, well, that's not much of a trap. That's just down. You know. And we get to, of course, stop traps like Mark falling down to the two story building. And then gets that going to the shelves. And then paint the And then the electrocution. And then we get to Joe Pesci's trap where he turned on light and his, again, his hat is on fire. 
and they go on there with I think that might be gasoline on the toilet and then I did a bag of concrete and again with the stairs but that ain't gonna work this time but that thing was of course something different knocked the both of them out and then crush their chest then that would kill them and then falling 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 and then Kevin's trap got playing got spoiled again and then Harvey Harry tried and then Harry tried to kill him but here comes the Pigeon Lady, who's also terrifying at first, but that just, you know, saves him, you know? And the car is haircuts. The pigeons are doves, and a marp scream again. And a wet pants over again, and Kevin has, is saved to save Christmas again. But instead, of course, he got himself in trouble with spending a lot of money for the hotel with his father's credit card. Okay, that's it for Hobolo 2, Lost in New York. Now we are going to go to the new kid. And it doubled the amount of burglars. Of course. I really, really don't want to talk about that one, but I got to anyways. I'll see you on the sixth day of Christmas. On the sixth day of Christmas movies, I just saw... No, Kevin Good Calister at Home Alone 3. Oh, Lord. Did I just want to say, of course, we are at Home Alone 3 with Kevin McAllister. But, other than that, Yeah, I think that's going to be the last one with John Hughes, I think. He's the producer of it. But although we got new actors, yes, a new family, no Kevin McAllister, no McAllisters, no Wet Bandits, no, no, uh, no Chicago, thank God, no New York City. Just a boring, bland, of course, location. Let's do it. Some new cast. And then you got the kid who later played Max Keeble. Yeah. And he's gonna. And that's about playing the kid with, who had chicken pox. Today he was like, oh, of course, home alone. No problem with the family or something like that. It's just, you know, of course, you know? That's an abomination, you know? Yes, yeah, so we got traps. Very funny. Very funny. Nice. The way he And then you got a parrot driving out. RC, an RC, RC car, and the old lady gave to Alex as a you know, princess present, who uh, gave it to him, who was, of course, having chicken pox. They got a burglar who's never been caught, stuck it on the igloo, and only had one cracker because he ate the other. And then, of course, we get, of course, the next one. And then it's, and then say for a 
And today we got the return of the McAllister. Well, only, only Kevin and George. His older sister and older brother. And of course, Mr. McAllister had, had later divorced Mrs. McAllister because he cheated on her. And then we got, of course, the return of Marth, but no Harry. And see, we got Harry's sister. And of course, not, of course, Bar for Turf, but he's not played by Yellow Stern this time. You're not going to believe who he's played by. The third rock from the sun. His very own French Stewart. Now, I got no problem with French Stewart, but I mean, he's a hit or miss. But, you know, with sequelitis, it ain't going to work. You know, I mean, he's really hilarious on third rock from the sun, but the, uh, of course, not the, uh, Eagles. I mean, I saw Inspector Gadget too. That's not a Christmas movie, but you know, that should be on history of uh, atrocities. Yeah. And then, of course, it. Well, I don't get to the dresses. It straps are worse. Here's the same, yada, yada, yada. And then, of course, they later leave. Of course, you know, the, uh, Mr. McAllister's girlfriend also gets arrested. Because she was the one behind it. But Holly has... Now, that's a guilty pleasure, because, you know... That's a guilty pleasure. I actually like that one. The Holiday Heist. Because you got Eddie Steeples from My Name is Earl. Malcolm McDowell, who you know him from. The Clockwork Orange. Oh, wait. A Clockwork Orange. And... And he was also in South Park as the British narrator. With telling the story of Pip. Pip and Cheryl. Oh, splendid. And that's about the kid who got grounded, of course. With his older sister also grounded. Because, but they are home alone. And they do stop the burglars. Well, there's two more of them, but I don't know who they are. I only know Eddie Stiebel's from My Name's Earl and Malcolm McDowell. Yeah. I mean, he would have been... He would have been a, made a perfect screw. So, I mean, we got Patrick Stewart. We got the guy who played... The opposite to Alec Guinness's Jacob Marley. Yes, I, I watch Scrooge. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm going to postpone planes, trains, and all the wheels to the 8th day of Christmas. To the 8th day of Christmas. And, and that's what I would have do for the 7th day of Christmas. On the 7th day of Christmas, I, when the movie says I see a... A Christmas Carol musical for me. Yes, I did happen to see Scrooge, which is a musical version of of a Christmas Carol. You know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not that bad. You know, I'm sure it has the same thing as, of course, you know. You know how the story goes: the grumpy old man. He was cheap, and of course, not a little one who was don't like this. But it was explored very well. We have Christmas Pass. Yeah, and he's got Cratchit, an underpaid employee. The screws that's, you know, really miserly. And he's got a a cheerful holiday, full spirited of a nephew named Fred. And then he goes to live alone, and then he was visited by the ghost of Jacob Barley. I say, three, the three spirits will have to haunt you. And then we get to the ghost of Christmas, of Christmas past. Talking about Scrooge's past and the love life. 
And then the Briscus Francis, the Smith nephew, and the Crudgeon. But the very one thing that belt screws his heart, and that's Tiny Tim, the kid in crutches. And that was, of course, the best part. And yes, there were musical numbers. I, I like lies. I, I, well, first of all, I hate people. That's, 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 that's the, you know, that's a good one. I like lies. This is a wonderful thing, of course. And we're singing with the Ghost of Christmas Crescent. And the nephew, and the, well, the nephew ones, it's kind of, kind of odd. And singing, thank you very much, thank you very much, it's the very nice to think that sounds pretty bizarre. They stay up. Yeah, that is the weirdest with with trying to hear see if his uncle is breathing. Of course he died. Of course Ebenezer Scrooge died and he was in a coffin. And that's weird. His nephew Fred trying to hear coffin. But then things got really depressing. Not because of the old man that died, but the young child did. And it was Tiny Tim. The Cedar Crutches. The next thing he saw was, of course. And yeah, and then we get to, of course, the grave of Tiny Tim and Cratchit, which was sad. And it breaks your heart. And then we see Ebenezer Scrooge's grave. Well, tombstone, and then. He see the face of Christmas yet to come. And it looked like a great reaper. And he screamed it fell all the way down the hill. And yeah, that one is kind of scary. See how it gets this Bob Marley? And that's what, of course, what happened. They Merry Christmas. Which, of course, is really haunting. And then he woke up, of course. And then, of course, you know, so ask the young boy. That's a remarkable boy. What day is that? It's why I haven't missed it. And then, of course, we get to. Of course, he's going to dress up as Santa. Then I give it a duck. So then. And, of course, you know, this. Does give Tiny Tim a present. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> he doesn't steal it. And then Red Little Scrooge scaring the wife of Cratchit. And I, of course, giving him a bonus. And then they saw it then. Yeah, we get to my favorite Christmas Scrooge music of all. The music piece. It's Thank You Very Much for Price. With Ebenezer Scrooge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice and stupid. The things the way they are. Well, I forgot the rest. And then he, of course, the fate of Nelf Ravens. Everybody celebrated. And then, of course, goes to the door of Jacob Marley. And then puts his Santa hat on. And then that was the end of the musical. Now, did I enjoy that? Definitely. Is it a popcorn worthy? Absolutely. Is it the best Christmas Carol? Mm, not exactly. I mean, there's Patrick Stewart. And the Jim Carrey ones, which I'm gonna, which I'm gonna do the Jim Carrey one. In a little bit. All right, guys, that's gonna do about it for days four through seven. Merry Christmas! And I'll be back for the remaining schedule on Christmas Day. Is of course the ones I'm gonna be talking about. It's of course the Christmas. Of course, with A Christmas Carol. Oh, wait. Planes, trains, and all of the bills. Jim Carrey's A Christmas Carol. And, uh, I forgot what else. Oh, yeah. Bad Santa. 
and of course, trading places. Uh, well, three of them are R-rated, so it can't be all family friendly. Yeah, I mean, I saw trading places, and it's and it's a Christmas movie. Yeah, that counts as a Christmas movie. Yeah, and the best of all for the twelfth day is, of course, the twelfth Christmas movie is Rankin Bass. Because you can't finish it out with the classics. All right, guys. I'm going to do this good to do about it for me. I'll see you guys tomorrow on Christmas Day. And of course, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And make the Utah gay. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a song. But the Christmas old tie. But, you know, other than that, I just want to say to everyone, just still have yourself a merry little Christmas.